For our buttonhole, we need to focus on stitch length and we need to focus on this button, which is going to take us through the different steps. Berninas are very user friendly when it comes to buttonholes. The first thing you're going to do is turn your stitch length down to between zero and one. It ends up being right at the half or midway point of those two numbers. Then we're going to start moving this dial. I'm going to show you on a scrap first. I highly recommend doing a practice buttonhole. We need to change to our buttonhole foot. The buttonhole foot for the Bernina is a number three. Here it is here. Instead of lining up the line you've drawn as a guide for your buttonhole with the groove in the center of the foot, you're going to be lining it up with this middle portion. Please reference your sewing machine manual as to how to change the feet to your machine and which foot is necessary. I'm going to do a sample buttonhole, which I've drawn out. It's approximately three quarters of an inch, and I want to make sure that when I sit down to sew my buttonhole, I know which direction it's going to go first. Some machines will actually start a zigzag downward, others will start up, and it's just creating the two halves of your buttonhole. You're going to line up the center of this foot with that drawn line. I'm going to start it at this end cap that I've marked and I'm sinking in my needle and my stitch length again is at a half. Once I've reached the other end that I've drawn, I'm going to stop with the needle up. Sometimes as you're going, you'll stop with your needle down. We need to make sure using our hand wheel that we get the needle all the way in the most upright position. Then what we're going to do is turn the buttonhole dial to two. After changing the dial to two, We've created a guide with machine stitching with the needle all the way in the most upright position. We're now going to turn the dial to three. Three creates a back tack, which helps prevent the button from ever ripping through the fabric. You really only need to do this three or four times. It goes pretty quickly. And then once you're done, you're again wanting your needle in the most upright position and we're going to change the dial again. We're now on step number four. Step number four ends up giving us the zigzag on the other side of the buttonhole. Once we reach the end that we've marked, we need to get our needle in the most upright position and turn the dial to number five. Number five is going to do our bar tack at the other end of the buttonhole. Again, only four or five times and then make sure you stop with your needle in the most upright position. And finally to six. Six ends up being a stitch that is just going to help knot your button off. It's a very tiny straight stitch that just helps secure it. You also only need to do this four or five times. And now we're done. We're able to take our buttonhole out of the machine. You'll see that on the back side, we just need to trim up our thread. but we have created our buttonhole that we need to do on the garment. You'll notice that I folded over my scrap to be two layers. It's because when we put a buttonhole in garments, we do need multiple layers. So make sure as you're doing your tester buttonhole that it is on multiple layers of muslin. I also wanted to show you what's happening when you're changing the dial. When I'm changing the dial for the Bernina 1008, it's going to change my position in terms of changing to a zigzag and changing my needle position. Some machines that do not have the buttonhole feature will actually tell you 
in order to do a buttonhole, you need to change it to a very small zigzag, et cetera, et cetera. If you look at this knob as I change the settings, we go to one, so we are at now a zigzag and our needle has been moved. Two, we're now back in the middle and a straight stitch for that guide stitch that we mark. Three, we're back at a zigzag and staying with our needle in the middle. Four, again at a different zigzag and now our needle has shifted position. Five, a different zigzag, wider for that bar tack. And six, we're at a straight stitch, but now we're very over to the side in order to give that anchor stitch. And then back at zero will be straight stitch and needle in the middle position. If you do not have a buttonhole setting, I may be able to guide you in how to sew a buttonhole without the settings by giving you directions of what needle position and what zigzag stitch to set the machine. Otherwise, please do reference your owner's manual.